Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video, I'll be showing how to create a plain old Java project inside of Android Studio. And we'll be using some uh, JUnit 5 with this. Now, normally, if I'm doing a Java project, I just use IntelliJ. Uh, but in some places, I need to use Android Studio, and I want to be able to create a plain old Java project just using that same IDE. It turns out that Android Studio is built on top of IntelliJ, and you just have to kind of trick it into playing nicely with plain old Java. So after we build a uh, Java project, we'll bring in some JUnit 5. So to start with, I'm going to create a new Android project, and then I'm going to select I don't want any activity. I could probably select something else because I'm just going to disable it, but this at least is maybe the least amount I want. And then I'll name it something like uh, my plain old Java project. You might name it something else like assignment three or whatever you're going to be looking at. Um, all the way down here, I'm going to select the language to be Java. And I don't really care about any of the rest of it, so that should be fine. So I'll click finish. And that builds me a fairly empty project. Now, let me just make it the right size here. So. Now I've got my project, it's an Android project like any other, and so it's got this app module. This app module is specifically for Android, and it turns out we don't need it. So what we're first going to do is we're going to create a new module for just Java. So I'm going to right click on my project, the app is fine, go to new, and then select module, new module. And under here, I want to scroll down and find where it lists a Java or Kotlin library. Of course, it's going to be Java for us, but that's fine. Uh, give it a name. I'm just going to call it something like my plain old Java module. You probably want to name it something a little more in tune with what you're actually doing, but this will at least kind of give us a clue as to where we're going. And I'll create a new thing here called my epic class. So maybe you want to build a class that's modeling rockets or who knows what. Uh, go ahead and name your class here what you like, and I'm going to make this Java. So I'll finish that. And it builds me this extra module. Now, where did it go? Well, on the left-hand side here, you can see that it is under, I've got an app module, and I got a plain old Java module that I just named that. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set this module up to be um, built with uh, Java 1.8, which is, I think should be a default, but turns out not to be. So I want to set the build uh, .gradle project, and there's three of them here. There's a build.gradle for the entire project, this first one. There's one for the app, and then another one here for my plain old Java module. So I'm going to go into there, and I'm going to tell it not 1.7 for the source and target compatibility, but 1.8, and I'll click Sync now. And this will allow me to use things like Lambda expressions in my JUnit 5, which turned out to be quite useful. Okay, so now I've got this Android app, and I've also got this Java part. It turns out I don't want this app. I can't really just delete it up, because then it's going to be looking for it. What I need to do is I need to load settings.gradle. So in settings.gradle, it lists all of the different modules. I'm going to comment out by putting two slashes in front of the line that says include app. And I'll resync the project now. And now you'll note that it's switched up here. Instead of saying Android, which it no longer is even willing to show me, it just says project because it's not detecting any Android projects at the moment. So it flips me over to the project view, and now I can scroll down here. Of course, there's this app folder, which I don't really need. I'm a little bit hesitant to delete, but I perhaps could. What I really care about now is this my plain old Java module. And inside of here is where I'm going to put all of my Java code. So under source, main, Java, and I got to expand the package. And here is my epic class. Currently nothing there. Let's make a, a main function. Can I zoom in a little for you? There we go. So I'm going to say this is a public static void main. It takes in an array of strings, which we'll call args. And of course, we're in, that should work, S-T-R-I-N, there we go. And S out, hit enter, and it does the autocomplete. And we're going to put in hello world from Java, Java only. Very nice. Let's run it. Control Shift F10 to run the thing you're in. And when I run it, we see down here, hello world from Java only. Hey, we got there. So now we have a Java only project inside of Android Studio. This saves us from having to install, for example, IntelliJ as well. All right. So now let's work on JUnit 5. 
So the easiest way to create some JUnit 5 stuff, let's do this. I'm going to make a public static uh, int function I'm going to call get5. Now what, you ask, should a function called get5 do? Let's just for fun make it return 5. I'm going to click on my epic class. I'm going to hold down Alt and hit Enter, and it brings up this little menu. I can probably right-click it. Let's try that. Yeah, um, right-click and auto-fix or something. But anyway, I'll click the button over here. Um, now I want to go, so it was Alt, Enter. I'm going to click on Create Test. And this allows me to begin kind of creating a test for that. Um, I want to select here JUnit 5. And then I'm going to say, let's create a, a test here for this get5 method. I don't necessarily need to create one, but that's fine. I'll click OK. And now it comes in to build. Now you'll note that it's currently not happy. It currently doesn't know what JUnit is. So again, I'll click on that, I hit Alt Enter, or I could click on the little icon there. I'll do it this time. And what do I want to add? Do I want to add JUnit 4 to the class path or JUnit 5? Well, I'm doing a JUnit 5 test, so I'm going to go with JUnit 5. It syncs up, but it still has a problem. And you can keep doing this, it doesn't help. So now you got to actually do some manual change here. So I'm going to go back over here under my main, uh, my plain old Java project that I created here, or pardon me, my module. Under my module, there should still be this build.gradle. It's now showing a different spot, but it's the same file as before where we switched it to 1.8. And we can see here that it has now bring in this implementation. Turns out I want, my problem is that basically it's currently just trying to pull in JUnit 5. I need it to tell it to pull in a specific version of JUnit 5. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, and then Project Structure. I'm going to go down to Modules, or probably Dependencies, there we go, Dependencies. And now it lists JUnit Jupiter, which is JUnit 5, because Jupiter's the fifth planet. I can go down here and say Requested Version. And I just need to set that to something. I'm going to set it to 5.6.2 because it's relatively recent, stable. That's fine. I don't really mind which one it goes to. I'll click OK. Now we can see here that it has added at the end the version that it's willing to pull in for me, which turns out to be the trick. I come back here, and once it's figured out that I'm um, reloading that, it's all fine. Okay, so let's just do a quick test on this. So I could do, for example, uh, assert equals... And I wish to say that if I go to control P, it'll give me some of these things that I can put in, and it's the expected comes first. So I'm expecting to get five when I call on my epic class dot get five. And now I'm going to go up here into my class. If I'm inside of the function, hit control, control shift F5, or F10, pardon me, it will run just that function. I want to run the whole test class, of which there's currently one method, but that's fine. And we can see we passed. Now I always want to put in something in here. I'm just going to put in a uh, assert uh, true. Oh, wait, assert, yeah, true, sure. And we'll put in false. This is an assert that should always fail. I'll hit Shift F10 to run again, and we'll just prove that it failed. And here it does, so that's good. We're seeing down here the JUnit fails. Okay, and the last thing I want to do is I want to test out my um, uh, ability to write um, Java. 8 or 1.8 code using a lambda expression. So I'll just do that here with assert throws. And I'm going to assert that it's going to throw an illegal argument exception. Sure. Dot class. And then the next next thing I need to pass it is the executable, which is to say a lambda expression in my case. So I'm going to put in the brackets, the arrow, and then throw new, well, you guessed it, an illegal argument exception. That should do me. And with luck, that compiles. Maybe I need to put an extra bracket in here, I think, just to make it all happy. Not exactly sure why, but it does. Oh, and a semicolon. So now I'm using a Lambda expression to execute some code, particularly useful with the throws, the assert throws. And so now I'll do a Shift F10. It'll prove this works. Yep. And maybe I'll switch this around to just to prove it fails. Uh, illegal access or error, access error, sure. Something I'm not doing. Shift F10 and this test should fail. So I've proven that my test actually works. Um, without trusting it, I've actually shown that, hey, this actually does what I think it will do. And rerun that once more. 
Okay, now the last thing I want to show is that inside of my Epic class up here, I've got my main, um, there's a few limitations to the command prompt, the text that's coming up here. Uh, the first one you'll note is the ability to print out just a partial line. So I'm going to do the S out and hit enter and it prints out this you know, autocomplete for me. I'm just going to do a print, not a print line. And I'll put out a colon here. Now in order to show this, I can actually do console input output. I'm going to do a scanner. Scanner, I'm going to call this my scanner equals new scanner based on system dot in. And it doesn't know yet what a scanner is. Alt enter, import the class, imports from Java Util. I now have my own scanner and so I can do something like int fave num is equal to my scanner dot next int. This will pull in an integer for me. And at the end of the day, let's just do s out. All done reading, and we'll print it out just to prove we can. Fave num. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift F10. If I hit Shift F10 right now, it's gonna rerun the test I was just running. Control Shift F10 runs the thing you're in. So we'll see that it builds, compiles, and here it is. Hello world from Java only. Seems to have stopped, but we're still running here. It stopped because it's waiting for the scanner. So I'm gonna type in five. Well, actually let's type in 42 because, well, it's different. And once I type in the 42, we can then see that the colon got printed out after that. So the output is not very good at flushing and getting things in the right order. Basically, if you want to put something on the same line as the input, it's not very easy. So there we go, all done reading and read the 42. Um, another thing that sometimes gets messed up is um, infinity. So S out and infinity prints like this. And I'm going to say double dot in positive infinity sounds good. And what this will do, I've seen it print in different ways in different places. On my machine, it's going to print out the word infinity. I've seen it other places print out the character infinity. And other places I've seen it print out just a question mark saying, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, but that's all we needed to do. We've now got a Java module running inside of Android Studio and we are testing it with JUnit 5. Thank you very much for watching.